This is our sous vide cooker. I'm using it today to make yogurt. The sous vide device itself is about 14 inches long and two and a quarter inches in diameter. It's got a heating element and a pump built into it and a control panel that lets you set the temperature and time that it stays on. I'll be setting it for about 100 degrees and 36 hours. The yogurt will go into this container, which will be filled about halfway full of water, and the sous vide cooker stirs the water around and keeps it at that perfect temperature. We've got four quarts and two pints. The other way to make this style of yogurt with long duration ferment is to use a yogurt maker. This is the lovely one. It has a half a gallon uh, glass jar or you can buy four pint jars. I wish I would have gotten the four pint jars to be honest. Um, and then it's you fill the bottom tray halfway full of water approximately set the time, set the temperature, just like the sous vide, 36 hours, 100 degrees, and voila, you will have delicious, creamy, thick yogurt. Here you can see some of the rest of the ingredients. There we got our organic, ultra pasteurized half and half. Inulin powder, it is a prebiotic. This is what the yogurt culture will feed on when the sugar is gone. And this is a more expensive brand. This one you can get at the, the Health Nut, I believe, and Willie Street Co-op. This one I had to order online. And then we got a Wizzerator. This is to help mix it. It's more gentle than a... Um, some of the more vigorous models. Let's get started. All right, we are ready to start. I got everything organized and ready. The sous vide cooker has four quarts in it, two pints, and the pints sit on little pedestals so the jars are immersed most of the way in water but not overflowing. We have Lactobacillus ruteri, the last of a quart. We have Lactobacillus gasseri, clearly marked with a G. And to make this easy on ourselves, we'll start with the ruteri. Open it up. And you can see there's probably a, a nearly a cup of it in there. Well then. We're going to add, you probably only need like two or three tablespoons, but this will make it go better and faster, I think. We're going to add some organic, ultra pasteurized, half and half. We're going to add a tablespoon of inulin powder. We're going to take our whizzerator. The inulin powder tends to clump up and the inoculant from the last batch tends to be quite thick like sour cream. So we mix up a small batch first and make sure there's no lumps and bumps and then that can be used to inoculate our other two jars. This is a bit more gentle than an actual whipper I believe because we are dealing with live things here. Clear the sidewalls. some more half and half. Whoa. Look at that. Way cool. All right. 
good enough. If we take a clean jar, pour half of it in, and fill the rest up with half and half. This is a probiotic, a lactobacillus gasseri, um, by Dr. Mercola. And this one is the um, BR, BNR 17 strain, which I hear is like off the charts good. So if I recall the directions, what you do is use five capsules per quart since we're doing a pint, we only need two and a half, but today we will use four of them. Each capsule is approximately 10 billion live units. Like this. This is how you would start a new culture that you got at the store. Only if I probably should have sterilized my hands or pasteurized them a little bit, but I'm not that fussy. It seems to turn out as long as you're clean. You don't. I don't think you have to be sterile. There, that's the culture in there. Now we add a little bit of probiotics. That's prebiotics, you dummy. A prebiotic is the food for the bacteria that it utilizes um, after it's completely consumed all the lactose from the milk culture. Then we add our half and half. It's a lot easier to mix up the inulin powder and the culture in a small amount of half and half rather than a full jar full. This allows you to get a very homogeneous mixture. Add the rest of the half and half. I'm going to stir this by hand. And one more. Oh, uh huh.
And this strain is Lactobacilla paracasea Shirota strain from Japan. Shirota. According to Dr. William Davis, the strain makes all the difference in the world, and we want to try to pick the best strains possible. We add our sous vide cooker, shuffle stuff around a little bit. Add our sous vide cooker, and if you look at the sous vide cooker, the water has to be above the inlet and outlet ports, between this line, but not over that line. And so, I'm gonna set it in place, bring some water over, What I'm using for risers, so the jars don't sink below the surface, are some clean bowls. Then I'm going to go up to the, almost to the bottom of the caps on the tall jars, and even a little further. All right, she's all set up, ready to go, except I got to put the lid on and program the machine with lid. And now, uh, I think we do this one like this. Bring it down to 100, and one, 100 degrees. Ruder I likes about body temperature, so I keep it at 100 degrees for Ruder And for the gas it likes it at about 110 degrees. That would kill the Ruder So first we'll ferment at 110 degrees for 36 hours, and then remove the router eye, crank it up to 110 for another six hours. So as you can see, it's all very easy. You don't have to pasteurize things, you just have to be clean. If the culture gets contaminated, you start a new culture, and all is good.